Volkswagen's Crafter, the UK's fourth best-selling large van, is the thinking business person's choice in this sector, especially since the adoption of a frugal set of 2-litre TDI diesel engines made this facelifted model far more class competitive. Now making more sense than ever before on the balance sheet, this is a contender better placed than most to take in its stride whatever your company can throw at it. A really large van is the type of thing your business will need for its heaviest, most awkward loads. The kind of vehicle that as a result will get the toughest day-to-day -to -day treatment. Such an LCV will inevitably require quite a substantial initial outlay, money that you'll want to safeguard as far as possible in resale value when the time comes to sell. Now for all these reasons it's tempting when buying uh, a really large van of this kind to stretch yourself a bit and go for the quality alternative. And in the big van market that usually means uh, a choice of two vehicles, either the Mercedes Sprinter or this option, Volkswagen's Crafter. Both are based on the same underpinnings and both roll down the same production lines at Daimler's Dusseldorf and Ludwigsfeld plants. A glance though beneath the bonnet of these two models will reveal two very different engines. The Volkswagens are more economical, which along with its lower upfront asking price explains its established appeal in Britain's large LCV sector. It's an appeal that Volkswagen hopes will be strengthened by the enhancements made to this improved version announced in mid-2011. The uh, change is based around the introduction of a more efficient range of 2-litre TDI diesel engines and a smarter look. The changes were timely. The original Crafter model, which dated back to 2006, couldn't match the impressive running cost figures achieved by more recently introduced large vans like Vauxhall's Movano and Renault's Master, and its bluff looks were beginning to age. This improved version, in contrast, returns to a position near the top of its class, building on a Volkswagen van heritage in the large sector, which dates all the way back to 1975. Let's put it to the test. Once you settle in to driving a large van like this, it's a very commanding experience. You sit high up in quite a car-like driving position thanks to the upright steering wheel and there's a supportive seat. A pity then that the original Crafter model's 2.5 litre five-cylinder diesel engine was so relatively ponderous. But that's not the case anymore thanks to far-reaching changes under the bonnet of this revised version. These centre around the installation of the same 2-litre TDI diesel engine that you'll find in Volkswagen's other smaller LCV models, the Caddy, the Transporter and the Amarok pickup. Here though, there's a much wider choice of tune. Uh, no uh, feeble 90 PS entry-level version as before, just decently pokey 109, 136, 143 and 163 PS outputs that'll get you and your load where you need to be with deceptive speed. Uh, this extra pulling power that uh, the 2 litre TDI has is something that operators will notice uh, in the first half a mile of driving if they're familiar with the original Crafter. And that's the case even with the entry level 109 PS uh, power plant that I'm driving here. The 300 Newton meters of torque provided isn't any greater than what was available previously, but the difference now is that it arrives much lower in the rev range, so you don't have to row the thing along with the gear lever in town. Overtaking is much easier too. This extra pulling power also is uh, another contributory factor in uh, the towing capacity of this revised crafter. All models can now tow a brake trailer grossing at 2,000 kilograms. Further up the uh, crafter range, the differences over what went before are even more uh, distinct. The top flight 163 PS BI TDI variant, for example, uh, with 400 newton meters of torque, has 40 newton meters more than uh, the equivalent version in the previous range. As usual with any van, handling depends upon the amount of weight you're carrying. Greater weight equaling greater composure. Now I've tested this van uh, empty and fully laden, uh, and it feels impressively planted compared to obvious rivals either way. 
Now, a lot of this is down to the fitment of an anti-roll bar on the front axle uh, with the heavy, heavier duty fitment on uh, more powerful versions. And uh, that means the body roll is kept more in check than is the case with some of this vehicle's French rivals. As you'd expect from a van of this kind, it's rear wheel driven for uh, greater um, icy weather grip. In fact, on the top CR50 model, uh, you've actually got two um, sets of uh, driven rear wheels. And you get a reasonably slick six-speed manual gearbox, unless you want to talk to your Volkswagen van center about the full torque converter automatic transmission also developed for this model. As with most large vans of this kind, the uh, steering, uh, the power steering is of uh, variable assistance kind, which means that it waits up on the open road and it's fairly light around town to facilitate a reasonably tight 13.6 meter turning circle on the medium wheelbase variant that I'm driving here. That turning circle will uh, be even tighter, of course, with a short wheelbase crafter. It falls to 12.3 meters, uh, but of course it'll go up if you go for a long wheelbase model to as much as 15.6 meters. If you are driving around town, then uh, the uh, large glazed area around the cab makes visibility easy. Around town, you'll also appreciate these large door mirrors, though with their um, integral indicators and built-in high-tech gadgetry, they will be expensive to replace if you damage them. They've also got uh, a wide-angle mirror built into the bottom for extra rearward vision. Though most of the changes to this improved crafter lie here, under the bonnet, Volkswagen's designers clearly felt they couldn't let this midlife update pass without some kind of stylistic nip and tuck. So it is that there's a slightly smarter front end intended to bring this design more into line with the look adopted by the company's smaller transporter and caddy models. As before, the emphasis is on practicality. Take, for example, this non-slip step in the central section of the bumper just below the front grille. Useful, for example, when you need to climb up and clean the screen. Along the side, tough rubbing strips that can be easily unclipped and replaced guard against minor knocks and scratches. And there are the usual tight panel gaps that emphasize the advantage in build quality that this Volkswagen enjoys over many of its rivals. Moving inside is easy thanks to a low step and a wide door opening. And once in the cab, well, it's much as before. Volkswagen's designers had a chance with this enhanced model to brighten up the working environment. In truth, they haven't really taken it, but there is a smarter, higher quality feel to the interior these days, thanks to a modified instrument cluster with cool white illumination and darker, more practical upholstery that'll be less likely to show dirt and marks. As you'd expect, two or three people can travel side by side at the front, but if you're not using the middle seat, then you can pull down its centre section to reveal twin cup holders and a pen holder, which is ideal if you've got uh, paperwork to complete or if you're merely stopping somewhere to have a bite of lunch. The driver's seat is multi-adjustable and the steering wheel adjusts for reach and rake, but only if you pay extra. If you do tick that particular box, then it's pretty easy to get comfortable. And once you are, then there's plenty of space for your odds and ends. The uh, door pockets, for example, uh, are designed to accommodate a 1.5 litre drinks bottle and they're big enough to swallow a very large road atlas. Then there are shelves above both sides of the windscreen. You've got uh, pockets on the sun visors, three large shelving areas on top of the fascia, one of which is big enough for an A4 size clipboard. There are five different cup holders scattered around the cabin for that morning trip to McDonald's. Uh, you've got a useful uh, clip on the fascia to get rid of stray paperwork. Uh, there's a large glove box that can be air conditioned to keep drinks cool. And there are jacket hooks here on the B pillars on each side of the cab. And pricing? 
Well, excluding the dreaded VAT, it lies in the expected 20 to 35,000 pound bracket common to this class of large van, though in today's cutthroat market that is slightly more than you'll pay for some mainstream rivals. Specific pricing depends upon your specific answer to the rather spooky question of which crafter. There are essentially four main model ranges within the crafter lineup. Panel van, window van, a choice of uh, chassis or double cab, and if none of that appeals, then uh, off the shelf conversions based on uh, drop side, Luton or tipper bodies uh, matched to either single or double cab chassis. Now with that issue decided, you've then to choose your vehicle weight. Now I've got a CR35 model here. Uh, that's a moniker that designates a 3.5 tonne gross vehicle weight. Alternatively, there are CR30 and CR50 variants with either three or five tonne weights. Next up, you've got to select a wheelbase. Now I've got a medium wheelbase model here, but I could also have chosen either a short or long or a maxi wheelbase uh, that has an extra 400 millimeters of vehicle length. Finally, uh, you've got a choice of roof height, either normal, high or super high. As for equipment, well, all Crafter models come with a sliding side door, an MP3 compatible CD stereo, electric windows, a 12 volt power socket, a Thatcham category one alarm and heat reflective glass. You also get a central locking system that uh, rather helpfully automatically locks the doors at uh, over 10 miles an hour to stop undesirables trying them when you stopped at the lights. The central locking system can also lock the cab and the load bay separately when you're loading or unloading. It is a bit galling though to have to pay extra for fairly basic features like electric mirrors or a rake and reach adjustable steering wheel. Given an options list brimming with technological tidbits, there's real scope to make your crafter a real technological showcase. But most businesses will want to show restraint in this area. But there are, of course, plenty of nice to have features, things like uh, a heated front windscreen, uh, a hill holder clutch to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions, auto headlamps and wipers, uh, front and rear parking sensors, a reverse parking camera like the one I've got here, uh, even a sunroof. Uh, depending on the type of loads you want to carry, you might also want to specify glazed rear doors with a wash and wipe. Uh, if this crafter was mine, I'd want to be uh, specifying things like the extra side loading door, um, the climatic air conditioning system, Bluetooth compatibility for my mobile phone, and even the suspension system for the driver's seat that will make it that bit more comfortable on longer journeys. Safety wise, you only get a driver's airbag in the standard tally, but a passenger uh, airbag is a relatively low cost option and there are side and head bags if you want them. Perhaps the most important safety development in this revised crafter is the adoption across the range of a much cleverer ESP stability control system able to uh, adjust itself to the prevailing weight of the vehicle and able to help uh, by adapting itself to acceleration, speed and brake pressure. You also get TCS traction control and an ABS anti-lock braking system made more effective by EBD electronic brake force distribution and helped in emergency stops by a brake assist system uh, that uh, in an emergency braking situation will advertise that to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. There's also a tyre pressure monitoring system on the options list. So, how practical will this crafter prove to be in everyday use? Let's assume that you're looking for the panel van that most will want and open these twin rear doors and find out. Now, they can be swung out in the usual way to 90 or 180 degrees if you release the stays. Now, there's a reasonably low loading height, which can be as little as 670 millimetres. And once you get your goods inside, well, the space available will of course depend upon your choice of wheelbase. Uh, there are four options, short, medium, long or maxi.
and that'll give you uh, interior load lengths of anything between 2,600 and 4,700 millimetres. Now, the total capacity, of course, is going to depend on the roof height that you choose. The choices being between um, normal, high and super high. And those three options equate to interior roof heights of uh, either 1.65 metres, 1.94 metres or 2.14 metres. So depending on your choice between all of these options, the load capacity of your craft can be anything between 7.5 and 17 cubic metres. So assuming that you choose the right variant, you'll certainly be able to fit a lot in. But that's not a lot of use if your vehicle also can't handle uh, a really heavy weight. Now thanks to the use of lighter engines across the range, uh, this improved crafter can offer uh, improved payload capacities, though the extent of those will depend on your choice of gross vehicle weight. There's uh, three different options, uh, up to three tonnes uh, for the CR30 model, uh, 3.5 tonnes for this uh, CR35, or up to five tonnes for the CR50 variant. Now, depending on your choice between that trio, uh, you're looking at payload capacities that can be anything from 1,044 kilograms uh, right up to 2,693 kilograms. Uh, and that kind of payload capacity has enabled me to shift, well, all of this. In other words, if you select your crafter carefully, pretty much everything you're going to want to carry will fit. The largest model is able to accommodate up to five Euro pallets. A sliding side door is standard with a second on the options list. And it's worth pointing out that the height and width aperture of this side door is big enough to enable those pallets to be loaded in from the side. To keep your cargo from moving about, there are two load lashing rings, one on each side of the B pillar and between 6 and 12 floor mounted ones, uh, depending on your choice of vehicle length. Now if you forget to use them and everything slides forward, you'll be glad of the standard full height bulkhead separating the load area from the cab. Half height plastic panels are provided for the insides of the rear doors, but here uh, I've done the job properly and specified a proper ply lining kit, not only for the insides of the doors, but for the entire interior load bay to properly protect against everyday scrapes and scratches. I'd also want to tick the box for the tailored floor covering. Running costs, of course, will depend on the engine and gross vehicle weight you select but uh, whichever your choice, you'll find a big improvement over the old 2.5 litre five cylinder model. Now, it especially helps here that the Euro 5 two litre TDI engines in this improved crafter are up to 100 kilograms lighter than the units they replace. Volkswagen reckon that the improvements are anything between five and 41%, depending on the variant that you choose. Uh, just to give you an example, the 2-litre BI TDI 163 PS Crafter uh, will go 8 miles more on every gallon than its direct predecessor. Uh, as a guide, you'll be averaging somewhere between 32 and 36 miles to the gallon in your Crafter, depending on the variant that you're in. CO2 emissions are also much improved, enhanced by as much as 10 to 20% across the range. Now for best results here, you'll need one of the Blue Motion technology models able to deliver CO2 returns as low as 199 grams per kilometer. Now this is thanks to a package of uh, enhancements that include things like battery regeneration, able to reclaim energy that would otherwise be lost when braking or cruising. There's also cruise control and a longer final drive ratio for the rear axle. Perhaps most importantly, the Blue Motion technology package also includes a stop-start system to cut the engine when you're stopped uh, at the lights or when you're waiting in heavy traffic. Now, the result of all of this is that this crafter in improved form now qualifies as an EEV, those letters standing for uh, an enhanced environmentally friendly vehicle. That's a pan-European term for uh, vehicles that uh, have CO2 emissions falling between uh, Euro 5 standard and the much more stringent Euro 6 qualification. Servicing costs have also been reduced by the fact that this 2-litre TDI engine 
unlike its 2.5 litre five cylinder predecessor, no longer needs the addition of a mixture called AdBlue. Now with the old five cylinder engine, uh, AdBlue was a water uh, urea mixture that was sprayed onto the exhaust gases to try and make them cleaner. The drawback was that it needed topping up um, every three years by the dealer. Now this engine no longer needs that and it can also work with a choice of servicing regimes. If you take the admittedly expensive step of replacing the engine oil with a synthetic oil, then uh, your crafter will then be able to work with what Volkswagen call a long life servicing regime. Uh, there um, are sensors that are able then to monitor the oil mixture and flag up on the dashboard exactly when a service is actually required rather than uh, work into a set servicing uh, arrangement as would normally be the case. Now, if you're able to go the long life route, then your servicing um, stops with this crafter can be as infrequent as every two years or 25,000 miles. As for warranties, well, you get three years of what Volkswagen calls bumper to bumper cover. The first two with no mileage restrictions. There's also a 12 year anti-perforation warranty and a three year paintwork guarantee, plus three years of pan-European roadside assistance with fully trained technicians on hand 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Is there a better quality large panel van out there than the Volkswagen Crafter? Assuming you prefer the Volkswagen's engine range and pricing structure to that of its Mercedes Sprinter stablemate, you'd have to say not. The only issue this vehicle used to have centred upon its running costs, but these are now much improved thanks to the adoption of a far cleaner and more frugal set of 2-litre TDI diesel engines. Yes, the Crafter is priced at a premium compared to some obvious rivals, but you can see and feel where the extra money goes. Forward-thinking businesses will accept this on the basis that residual values are very strong and the whole vehicle feels and is built to last, enabling operators to spread the upfront sticker price over a longer working period. In 10 years' time, I'd wager that this vehicle will still be going strong at a point where most of its rivals will be falling to pieces. Enough said. <laughs>